ready. Let's do it. Well, shimmy shimmy. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, so we are back in Alexa's kitchen and since Thanksgiving is coming up, we thought that we'd give you some options to make as side dishes for when the holidays come around. Obviously you guys, everyone has their own family recipes and secrets on how to cook the turkey. Keep it in the family tradition and we've got you on the sides. You don't need to always go wild over the holidays. I know people stress out about that. Well, here's some great tasting healthy options for you. So what are we gonna start with? So today we're making a roasted butternut squash harvest bowl. Ooh. And it's got butternut squash, kale, sauteed with some olive oil, some pumpkin seeds, some cranberries, so it's a good little nice, nice, salty mix. It's got a good blend of what would you say, some carbohydrates in there? And some quinoa, I forgot to say quinoa. Awesome. There's quinoa awesome. there too, so it's a great blend of carbs, and then you also get your veggies nice. and your healthy fats. And that sweet little tang from the cranberry too. Mm -hmm. All right, well why don't we go ahead and get started. Yeah, let's do it. The first thing we're gonna do is preheat the oven. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and I actually bought two different kinds of butternut squash just to show how you can buy it in the grocery store because this is what the whole one looks like. And funny looking thing, Matt. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Squash is funny. It is. Like I've got like a del pop. They're all they like grow really in good cool. shapes. They do. They do. I love a good squash. But um, I've almost sliced off a few fingers trying to cut this. Personally, like maybe I didn't have enough sharp enough knife or something, but it was a little scary. Well, we'll so. see because I'm gonna use your knife. <laughs> <laughs> this one's sharpened. We sharpened okay. it, so it okay. should be good. This was before. This was probably like a couple years ago. Though. Okay. I haven't tried since. It's to all right. Cut one, it's all right. So I wouldn't have. If I'm I leaving you up to that. Okay. Task. All right. So she's gonna start slicing this one, and I'm just gonna show you guys that you can also buy it already sliced like this, which would be a huge time saver. It is pricier to buy it like this. Um, but it will save you time and it will save you your fingers possibly. So, <laughs> um, first thing we're gonna do is we're going to uh, drizzle the butternut squash with some olive oil. How's it? Cool. Cool. All right, good so far. So the key to not cutting your fingers off is to cut both of the ends off, right? Yep. So now it's flat. So then you can go straight. Oh, you slice down the middle like that. Okay. Yeah. If your knife is sharp enough. How do you get the skin? Oh wow, well, I got you sis, it's coming okay. up. Alright. So yeah, I'm gonna go all see. the way. And then voila. Yep. And it looks like this on the inside. Mm -hmm. And then I just have a big spoon, like a tablespoon, and I'm just gonna take it and seeds. scrape the seeds out. But I'm gonna go over there and do that. Or in the or trash or wherever. The trash or but fun anywhere. fact, actually I wanna try something. Let's save the seeds. Okay. I'm gonna give you a bowl. Ooh. Because you can actually um, Use the seeds, and you can wash off all the orange, and you can actually um, roast them. Cool. Like put Let's try it. things on it and roast it. So oh, I might so good. give that a shot. Killing a bunch of stuff for this last one. Remember, <laughs> yeah. killing a bunch of pumpkins with many seeds. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I'm gonna sprinkle this on here first while she's cutting that. And we're actually gonna use about four cups of butternut squash. So I've gotta get two more cups out of that guy, which I think will be fine. And how much olive oil do I need? Just a couple tablespoons. So I usually eyeball this. Um, oh shoot, I forgot to show my silk hat. I like using these things which are called silk hats. They're kind of like, um, sil they're silicone, so they're really floppy and they're easy to clean, but they last forever and you can pretty much roast anything on them and it'll wash off, so. FYI, you can get them at like Bath & Beyond and probably Target and all those places. So now how do I take the skin off? Okay, yes. you have two choices. Yes. I use a knife, but you could just get a veg, do you have a vegetable peeler? I do. It's hot. Okay. I used a knife and that's where I almost cut my. And I'll show you both ways, you just, but make sure it's like cut in half so it's not a weird shape. Mm -hmm. And then you just get it on the edge of that lip and you can just, Peel it straight off, mm -hmm. which is one way. That's which, a lot easier than, yeah. But I do usually use a knife. If you don't have a vegetable peeler, I'll show you the other way as well. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start cooking the quinoa. So I'm gonna just get like a saucepan and just start cooking the quinoa while she's finishing that. So. It does take a little bit of time. So the quinoa's gonna take about 15 minutes anyway, so. Oh, I forgot the first step, which is to preheat the oven. Don't forget to preheat the oven. That is the Rewind. most important. There is nothing worse than getting all your stuff prepped, and, and you want to go put it in the oven, and the oven's not on. Okay, and the way with a knife would be the same thing. You just grab, so your hands are nowhere near 
they're behind the blade and you're pointing the blade away from you. And then you just I know how I... edge off. Oh, actually, the vegetable peeler is way easier. Is it? I don't know why I use a knife. Jokes there you on me. See? Alright, so quinoa is getting ready to roll, and then I'm gonna get another pan. The butternut squash has to bake for about 25 minutes. So I'm gonna wait to saute my kale until the butternut squash is ready because then you have to kind of add all that in together. And if you guys need to pause while you prep your butternut squash, go for it. <laughs> what do you think of that one? I like it. Yeah. A little uh, Irish accent. Wait, was that Irish? I'm not sure what that was. Okay. So I just drizzled olive oil onto the squash. And I'm gonna put this in the oven for 25 minutes. Okay. okay. All right, so we are now gonna grab the butternut squash right out of the oven. So it's been baking in there and chilling. Well, not chilling at all. <laughs> Burning up. Mm. Oh yeah, nice little brown edges. And now we're gonna, you're gonna add all the olive oil into the large skillet over a medium to low heat. Mm -hmm. And then add the kale, which we've already gotten that's chopped for about three to five minutes. So how much kale are we gonna need? Eight cups. I usually just kind of guesstimate it. Like I'll do like a handful as like a cup, cup up. Right? Yeah. So like this is probably like equivalent to one cup. Yeah, that makes sense. Motion in there. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So eight handfuls. Add the quinoa. The roasted butternut squash and balsamic vinegar into the skillet, then toss into wet and wet, wet, excuse me, until well mixed. Uh, and then toss it, toss it. <laughs> okay, so I figured we bring you over this side and show you what's going on. All right, so it's starting to get wilted down a little bit as the pan heats up. So I'm gonna start to add some of the stuff and just kind of let it all cook together. So I'm gonna add a tablespoon of balsamic vinegar. Cool. And I can tell that this stuff is... I can hear it. It's crackling. Mm -hmm. The butternut squash and the quinoa are already cooked, so it's just the kale that we're really trying to get it to wilt and soften yeah. up. I really like cooked kale. I love kale in a salad too if it's mm -hmm. finely chopped, but when it's cooked, it definitely takes that bitterness away for me. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, um, like kale is always better like as leftovers too because then it wilts even more into like the other flavors that are in the mixture. Right, right. Add some salt and pepper now too. Cool. Just how it's... Little spices and now this is where you can get creative. You can follow these recipes obviously and if you're not the best cook, probably stay with following and stick to the recipes. But if you know what you like, add the flavor and the seasoning that you like. Oh. Another great tip for you guys with oh. your fresh herbs that if you grow anything, which I love growing vegetables and, this, and herbs and the best. I love it, it's my uh, hobby. Um, if you dice your stuff up and freeze it, it will last as long as it's frozen. Yes, so we've got a half a cup of pumpkin seeds and a half a cup of unsweetened cranberries. Make sure it's unsweetened. Cranberries are already sweet, so yeah. you don't need them to be extra sweetened. 